Hi everyone, welcome back to Step by Step Embryology, continuing on talking about gastrulation. Although we're not going to talk all about gastrulation today, just one critical step uh, because this gets more complicated and I wanted to spend some extra time in depth on one step in particular. So last time we talked about implantation and we got to a place where we talked about the bilaminar disc with the epiblast and the hypoblast. So gastrulation happening within the third week of pregnancy from days 14 through 19, we are going to go from the bilaminar disc to the trilaminar disc. And that's it. Just kidding. There's more steps to this that we're going to cover. So we saw the epiblast and the hypoblast, and we are going to eventually get to three layers. And these will become the three germ layers that will give rise to all of the tissues in the body. But there's one step here that is very, very important, and it doesn't stay permanently at all, but it sets up something very important for further differentiation and for uh, further establishment of the human body. So we're talking about something called the primitive streak, and we're going to go in a lot of detail on this. So we started off with our bilaminar disc, and we are looking now from the top down. So you notice we cannot see the hypoblast because we're looking down on it as if we were on top of the epiblast, looking down just at the epiblast. So the hypoblast is still there, but we just can't see it from this view, and it's not really important for this part of the video. So we have some transcription factors that are going to cause um, DNA to be expressed uh, and so we can have this differentiation take place. So one of these factors is VG1. And VG1 is going to act on nodal and this is going to cause the formation of the primitive streak. And we will go into more detail about exactly what happens here, but this is the differentiation point. This is going to be a fold in the epiblast where cells are going to migrate through and differentiate into the three different germ layers. So this is incredibly important that we have this. If there's no primitive streak, there is no differentiation. There is no embryo that can uh, happen uh, at all beyond this stage without the primitive streak. So how we get here is very, very important, and I wanted to talk about this because we are establishing axes. So we already had the axis uh, from anterior to posterior, although we're kind of superior to uh, inferior at this point because we're looking top down. But we have one axis so far of the epiblast and the hypoblast. We have two different uh, areas that require differentiation. So now we're going to also talk about uh, how we get the cranial caudal axis and also a left to right axis. So if you have a person, they have different features at their head than they do at their feet. They also have symmetry on the left side and the right side of the body. And then you have further axes from anterior or the front of the body to posterior to the back of the body. So you have many different factors that need to be there to tell different parts of the body, hey, you're going to be the head, you're going to be the feet, you're going to be the left side, the right side, the front and the back. You need these axes to be established. And there are clinical cases where the axes are not established and you can see certain complications because of that. So this step is incredibly important. And with this primitive streak, what we are doing especially right now, is we are developing a cranial and caudal axis. So the primitive streak is going to form at the caudal end. So the tail end or the foot end, the bottom end of the human uh, is going to be formed by this primitive streak. So you have certain factors that play in that tell the primitive streak where to go. Uh, so, and you'll notice as well that the primitive streak is going to elongate. At first, we had just this round disc, and then it is going to elongate. The cranial end of the gestation is going to be more wide, and then you're going to get narrowing at the caudal end. So, we're already seeing differences between these two ends of the embryo. So, how does the primitive streak? How does the primitive streak know where to go? Uh, so there are a few different factors along with VG1 and nodal that are going to help this take place. 
So like I mentioned, we have VG1, which is going to act on nodal, which is going to form the primitive streak, which the primitive streak is going to be the catalyst for developing the three layers and also for developing left and right symmetry. So there are some other transcription factors, namely WNT, uh, and this is going to stimulate VG1. So it's not necessarily the main requirement for developing the primitive streak, but it does upregulate VG1 and therefore encourage the primitive streak to take place. If you have someone that does not have WNT, they are not going to develop a primitive streak and are not going to develop beyond this point. Uh, and then you have something called DKK and something else called crescent. These are both transcription factors. These can both inhibit WNT. So what is important here that let's say you had WNT everywhere uh, and you had VG1 everywhere, you're going to get too many primitive streaks. So the fact that many cells are going to produce DKK or crescent, those are areas that's going to tell VG1 and WNT do not make a primitive streak here. So that's how we get only one primitive streak instead of multiples and how we get it localized to one area and not everywhere. So DKK and Crescent, very important for making sure that there's only one primitive streak and it is in the right spot. So the next regulating factor is from the hypoblast. So you'll notice that we only have the primitive streak in the epiblast. And it's very important that it only happens in the epiblast. And we'll get into why in the next video. But th there is uh, a collection of transcription factors in the hypoblast that are going to inhibit nodal. So if you have VG1 that's acting on nodal to get the primitive streak, if we don't have these factors in the hypoblast, you would get primitive streak formation in the hypoblast. And we do not want that. So more transcription factors telling nodal, hey, this should not go here. Keep this in the epiblast. And then the last one I want to add to this is BMP. So BMP is very important for telling the primitive streak that it needs to happen in the center. So in the center where the primitive streak is happening, um, you're going to get low amounts of BMP because BMP is an inhibitor of the primitive streak. So if you have high levels of BMP, you're going to have no formation or minimal formation of a primitive streak. So you have a low BMP, low inhibitor at the center, and that is where the primitive streak is going to form. And then as you go farther to the periphery of the gestation, you're going to see high levels of BMP, which is going to inhibit primitive streak formation. So this whole gradient system is something that we're going to see across all of this embryology process uh, because certain things like where your fingers develop, how you have a thumb on one side and four fingers on the other side, that is going to be re regulated by uh, concentration gradients of these transcription factors. Uh, and we're going to see that throughout. So this is just a little introduction to how these tr transcription factors are going to Im impact embryology. So it got really confusing in this video, and I know it's not as much content. It's not going as forward as um, I wanted to necessarily for this video, but this is very important. Axes are going to play a huge role later on, so really get comfortable with these factors with this video because you're going to see BMP again. You're going to see WNT again, and next time we're going to follow the primitive streak and where we go from here to developing the three germ layers. So I hope you liked this video, and I will see you all in the next one.